Welcome back. It's episode 19 of the Crazy Beautiful Podcast. <laughs> and we are super excited to have you guys back. We just got finished actually talking and some really hilarious stuff just went down. Um, <laughs> but before we get started, we're going to open up with prayer. And does anybody feel led to pray? Not Hold on, Ari is FaceTiming me. Uh. <laughs> We're dealing with people's children FaceTiming them during conference calls and things of that nature. So I'm sure everybody is familiar with that at this time. Now she's FaceTiming us. Okay. okay. We're going to, I'm sorry, Ari. It's so sad to decline a five year old's FaceTime. I feel like a terrible person. Okay. Okay. Oh my okay. Goodness. I'm sorry. <laughs> you guys, but you guys know what it is. <laughs> so, oh, I will gosh. open us up with prayer and then we're going to get into it. All so, right, right. Heavenly Father, we come to you today. Thank you, first of all, for the laughter and for the joy. We thank you for those gifts and we gladly open them yes. and just kind of soak them in. We want to ask for your guidance here as we get into this podcast and we hope and actually we pray for your presence to come through and speak yes. please open our hearts and let us receive and allow us to just let you take the lead yes. as always yes. and lord if there's anything that it is that we that we're not seeing or perspective that we need to, that we need to just shift a little then open our hearts open our minds holy spirit speak holy spirit speak yes. holy spirit speak because we don't know what to say but you do and we just ask that you intercede and do what it is you would like us to do within this time we pray that you continue to just bless us and continue to show us the way to go and we pray that when we leave out of here we leave out of here just spirit filled and ready to continue to fight the spiritual battle that is going on around otherwise to step back and let you, allow you to fight that spiritual battle but to walk out of here in peace and walk in the love and the fruits of the fruits of the spirit that you've given us and we want to run around and just disperse those as you would like us to disperse them in jesus name we pray amen amen so we we actually have already talked a little bit about our week our week was very very full and very exciting and wonderful i i told my I shared with my mom and my sister i have a video of like 40 50 bikers that rode up on me and my kids when we were out taking a ride and they were popping wheelies and jumping up on their seats and it was really exciting um for those of you who don't know i back before I found the Lord, I was a huge DMX fan and I used to love the Rough Rider videos <laughs> and the Rough Rider bike gangs. And so it was kind of like being in the middle of one of those videos, but kind of scary at the same time as exciting because, you know, you're just praying that everybody will be okay with with all of the like going to the circus when you see the people on the tightrope you're like that's really cool. But there's kind of anxiety and everything because you're like, please don't fall. I don't want anything going down. Yeah. So that was really awesome. Um, do you guys, does anybody else have anything they would like to share? I have so much, so much to unload. So much. Um, I mean, the only other thing that I wanted to talk about today, which won't be that long, but I think it's really, will hopefully be really um, encouraging to our listeners, is... There is a verse in Esther where I believe it's Mordecai talking to Esther and telling her perhaps you were made for a time like this one. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're not familiar with the story of Esther, Esther's story is kind of interesting because she's just a girl who is in this town and the king okay. basically um, tells his wife she has to leave and then, or kills her, one or the other. But she's gone. Yeah. The queen is not in the picture. Yeah. Hey, and he's wait. looking for a new queen. Queen Vashti, by the way, she gets a bad rap because her the king actually had a drinking problem, and he called her to come to him when he was in a drunken state, and she was sick of it and was just like, "I don't want to go." So it there's there's so much there, but I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go. Ahead. <laughs> no, well, thank you for sharing that because I was I wasn't able 
was articulate that part of the story. So yeah, so so she was done with this guy, and now he's looking for a new girl. And so what he does is he like gets all the girls basically in this in his um, in his area that are young and beautiful to come to his castle. Um, and Esther's kind of forced into that, and she ends up becoming the queen. So that's such a layman's term way of telling the story. It's a beautiful story in the Bible. Definitely look up. It's a whole chapter, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and she shows so much bravery through that. But I love that that, that verse came out of <laughs> Esther because... I often, and I put it on my wall, because I often think um, sometimes, like, why in the world is all this happening to me? And I am sure that a lot of people right now who are walking through this pandemic would say the same at times. Like, why in the world? Why, why am I a single mom who is working full time and about to homeschool their kids? Like, why would this happen? But then you go back to a story like Esther's, and she was asking, why me? Like, why would the king pick me? Why do I have to be uh, the queen? Like, I didn't want to do all this. This is something that someone else has set me up for. But in the end, she ends up saving her uncle Mordecai from this really, really, really bad dude. That's trying to like. He was a thug. He was. He would have been in DMX's crew. Okay. <laughs> I don't know about that. Hey, man. I don't know he about him. Rides. Like that's mm -hmm. how he would be like chilling no. and doing all that. So. King was really bad. She stood up to him, saved Mordecai's life, who's her uncle. Um, but if she had not been queen, if she had not been put into that position, um, she wouldn't have had the authority and the, the ability to be where she was to do what she did. And so I just want to, like, take that piece and that joy and pass it on to our listeners and knowing that maybe we were built for a time like this. And maybe right now there might be days or times where it doesn't feel that way where you kind of want to throw in the towel and be like, I don't want to do this, this is crazy, this is just too much. But God is with us, this is God is with Esther, and he will help you through it. So just want to give that encouragement, because that was something that was on um, my mind and my heart this week. So definitely check out the chapter yes. of Esther if you haven't. It will sound much better than the way that I described it. <laughs> but it's definitely a great... Uh, a great chapter in the Bible it um, to check out. And I, like, a couple of, maybe a month or so ago, I went through the Book of Esther. Do you mm -hmm. remember when I was going through Esther? Mm -hmm. And I remember that part, and the thing that stood out to me about this part was, yes, that he said, you were created for a time such as this. And Esther's response, because the people were crying out to her and saying, you have the ability to do something, do something. And her uncle actually wrote her a letter and was like, if you don't think you're safe just because you're there and da da da, da mm -hmm. And her response was, tell the people to pray and fast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And whatever the Lord says to do, that's how I'll move. Mm -hmm. And if I die, I die. But I love the fact that God actually has not mentioned any other place in the book of Esther. Mm -hmm. And Esther, okay. at that moment, her movement, and me and mom were talking about this today. The movement, it's not about the movement. It's about what's moving you, mm -hmm. what's leading you. And that, I mean, and that's what I love about the Bible is when you read it, Kiara got that, I got that. Like you and somebody else will read it and get something totally different. Mm -hmm. Like all of us can read it and that's the way it was set up so that we could share with each other and that God, because if he put it all in one of us, we wouldn't be able to, it would be too much, mm -hmm. you know? So we're able to actually be like, hey, I got this and you got that. And oh, that was dope. But that, the book of Esther, I agree. And it's a, it's a short little book. If you are just now getting back into like having your quiet time or whatever. And I mean, it's a short little book. It's a story, which is sometimes easier for people when they are starting out reading it it's a story so it isn't true to life but, yeah. and i mean it is a story it's in it's the story of esther yeah so um sometimes you go into different books and it is like letters from paul or mm -hmm. so the letters and things like that you're like uh and especially if the spirit isn't leading you and you're just going into it trying to read it you're like this don't you know but yeah yeah, that. Oh, and to piggyback off that too, if you have little ones and you want to expose them to the story of Esther, the Veggie Tales, they do have an excellent version mm. of Esther. Um, 
that is good to watch. Um, it's at their level, mm-hmm. so it mm-hmm. definitely is. They have some funny parts. Like, they say that Vashmi was kicked out because she wouldn't come and make a sandwich for the kids. <laughs> so. <laughs> but, so it's definitely at their level, but it's really good. Um, and Ari, definitely, my daughter, she loves the songs that were that they incorporate into that story, too. So it's a good way to expose um, little ones to that story. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And, and also... What what it is it brings to mind for me is God's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. And as we read through God's word, it brings to remembrance of He is the same. He loves us. Um, he has created us for a purpose for such a time as this Mm -hmm. this time period that i'm in that i've been saying the last couple of days strongly i live them with purpose in love Mm -hmm. and i have a period of time i don't know what my period of time is yeah and so with that i choose I choose just like Esther chose just Mm -hmm. like David chose just like Moses chose just like Abraham chose all of those in the Bible there's good bad and the ugly in the Bible Mm -hmm. but in their time what they chose to do is what brought forth the next phase through God Mm -hmm. The trust and faith and the belief that we have in him. Yeah. So I I just think, you know, Esther is a wonderful book Mm. for us to read through and go back to. And just to remember, he may not be mentioned, but he is God. Yeah. It's just to acknowledge. Yeah. To be acknowledged. Yeah. He's acknowledged in Esther. Mm Mm-hmm. And he is the same yes yes now now i started this morning i was in my quiet time and i started in one spot ended up and the message we're going to be watching today is a message we've watched before but some of the things that we have gone through this week we were talking about when you're talking to others and you're sharing as your relationship deepens with God and as you start to like really like you're you really start to seek him out like every morning it gets to a point where you're just like oh my gosh like you can't wait to have that devotional time you can't wait to have that worship time it grows it changes it morphs into different things but it becomes a real true relationship just like with any relationship when that becomes the most important relationship to you in your life and it is growing as you go throughout your day and you talk to other people, what do you do with, when you talk to people at work, you talk about your spouse or you talk about your significant other, or you talk about your children, you talk about your relationships. If it's truly a relationship, when you shift, shift from it being a religious act to a relationship, as you go throughout your day and you talk to people, your relationship and what you're going through, God is going to come up. And we were talking about the way that sometimes, and it is a spiritual battle, because I said, it's the spirit that's agitated, it's not the person. As you're talking to different people and taking them taking it as, you think I don't know, you think I don't know the Bible, or what are you, you're trying to change me? You're trying to control me? And you're like, that's not, I'm just talking about, or them thinking that you're just trying to show off that you've memorized Bible verses. Now we pray for those who do move in that way. And we pray for ourselves when there are moments when we move in that way to show off. Or we feel like, oh, this verse is for somebody and we try to manipulate the word. So we pray for ourselves and others when that happens. But when you're earnestly just having a relationship with the Lord as you talk to people throughout the day, whatever the situation is going to be, God is going to come up at some point. And oftentimes people take that and they're, excuse me, what will happen is whatever is agitated is just like, see, they're trying to change you. They think you don't know the Bible. You already know this. 
and it comes off as like you're trying i hear they come and that's not what it is it goes back to again you having when you have something that peace and a joy that god gave you and you know it's a gift that's available to all and you're walking around especially for people who are close to you and you see them walking in a way you see them hurting you see them trying to like pick up everything and do it themselves or even for each other, you know, you see that, oh, there's kind of darkness in this area. He set us up that way because somebody around you will have light and be able to bring that to you. But you have to be open to receive. And I know Revelation 33.20 is where Jesus talks about knocking. Mm -hmm. He knocks at the door of the heart. But they have to be open to receive. And if they're not open to receive... Matthew 10, 12 through 14, <clears throat> embrace the realities of that limitation, shake the dust off your feet, collect your peace and keep it moving and give them up to God. Just because I'm not the one who can change you doesn't mean that there isn't one who can change you. Amen. So I pray for you and I keep it moving. And Jesus knew just like his disciples were going to go through it. He knew we were going to go through it too. They weren't, there were going to be people who didn't listen, who weren't open to receive it from us. How did he know that? Because they didn't listen to him. And he was God. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So he's like, so let me just give you these tools. And mom and I, we actually were reading through Galatians 5. And that is where I actually... Woo! Galatians 5. Galatians 5 has so much in it. It talks about freedom in Christ. How Christ is actually offering you freedom. And, I, you know... The enemy tries to pervert it like everything. Mm -hmm. He's trying to stop you from having fun. He He's trying to hold you back and he's in the way, you know? <laughs> so, but really what he's offering you is freedom. And as we started reading through it, I was like, man, mom, this is 2020. This really is 2020. Because if you start at verse 19 in Galatians 5, now the works of the flesh are revealed, which are these, adultery, sexual immorality, impurity, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, rage, selfishness, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, carousing, and, like, and the like. I warn you, as I previously warned you, that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. Those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And in, in Galatians, it talks a lot about the difference of walking in the flesh versus walking in the Spirit. And it talks about how the two are constantly at war. There is no gray area. There is no, well, they were kind of, it's either driven by the spirit or it's driven by the flesh. There is no gray there. And I think a lot of times, like I know for me anyways, I'll be like, well, you know, <laughs> they were, and that's why I've, I've been talking to my children about getting rid of that. This is a good person and this is a bad person. No, what was their motivation? If the motivation behind mm -hmm. their action was the Lord and the spirit, then that is good. Right, if right. the motivation behind whatever they're doing is not God, that's not good. Mm -mm. And so it doesn't mean that they're a good or a bad person. It just means that at that moment, because at that choices. moment, I could have been being led by something that wasn't God. I could have thought I was being led by God and it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And so that helps. I think as you start to dive in, God starts to erase a lot of those gray areas mm -hmm. and make things very black and white. And like we said, and to others they'll look at you and be like nah but see it's not just black and white oh but baby it is black and white mm -hmm. um but i can't sit up and be like hey see you look at you no you it's just that's just a darkness to you right now and if i can impose the light then i know what to pray for i was just in i was set in that place to pray for you and keep it moving mm -hmm. the end but and the other part of galatians 5 that was so dope and for our family personally is there is a part in Galatians 5 where he talks about the whole law because he goes back and forth with 
if you're still under the law, then you're kind of just like spitting on grace and saying grace is pointless. And you can't be in grace and under the law. Um, and just living by the law. Sorry. But he says, let me see. It's a part where he says that the whole law is summed up under one word. Love. Love. Mm -hmm. And when I was reading through with my mom and I got to that part, I was just like, oh, it's 14. Chapter 14. Excuse me, verse 14 of chapter 5. For the entire law is fulfilled in one word. Not summed up. It's fulfilled mm -hmm. in one word. Even love. in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you are consumed by one another. Mm -hmm. Love. And love. Love. Love that you have for so all those around you. Mm. All those around you. I had to explain that last night um, when I was reading from the book that I was reading from because he, um, this Ostianus in his book um, Carpe Diem, um, he stated um, for you to love your neighbor and the question was asked, well, what does he mean love your neighbor? You know, like as if to love your next door neighbor mm -hmm. or something like that. And I said, well, this is how I see it. Um, your neighbor is the one who's next to you, who's in your presence, who you're talking to, who you're conversing with, who you're sharing with. That is your neighbor. Mm -hmm. And you're to love your neighbor when you're talking, when you're expressing, when you're doing whatever it is that you're doing with your neighbor on a Zoom call, on a, mm -hmm. you know, anything that someone is right there and they are now neighboring your presence. Right. That is your neighbor. Mm. And so with that being taken into respect of all those who are in your presence, when you are talking, I'm talking to Patrice, yeah. I'm talking to Kiara, I'm talking to whomever is willing to listen to our podcast, I'm talking to all of you as my neighbors in love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the whole law is fulfilled in that one word. In the one word. Love each other. Mm -hmm. That is love the directive. And I mean, yeah. that's it. And what you were saying with Michael yeah my brother and for our family to hear that the whole law is fulfilled in that one word to know that my brother's last word was love is overwhelmingly beautiful yes overwhelmingly beautiful um, any questions any doubts you could have had in your mind the last thing you did was fulfill the whole law yeah you fulfilled the whole law with one word. Amazing. And God is just And that wasn't so... prejudgment. You know, I'm I'm getting ready so I have to prepare my That word. was his last moan. That was his last moan of a word. His last breath. Yes. So, um God, man, but God. Yes. And yes. so, like I said, <laughs> the last thing I'm gonna say, and I know I've said like so much. Yes, yeah, she's. Like, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> At least she didn't lie. <laughs> Kiara was asleep. Now, um, <laughs> when, with me telling the kids, we're talking about, you know, get rid of the good and bad. Don't look at the movement. Ask God for discernment on what's moving them. And we were back this morning in Numbers and Joshua, looking at the children of Israel. If you listen to the podcast, you know my struggle with the children of Israel. Pray for me because I realize <laughs> again that sometimes I am the children of Israel, but the struggle is real. I was back at the part with the spies and just going into the fact that these spies, it is so like... Y'all, like, it's so relevant to today. The spies came 
And they actually started with, this is the land of milk and honey. But what was moving them, <laughs> what spirit was with them, and God actually calls it out a couple of verses later, is what caused them to say, they didn't even go through anything. They went through the land, they saw there was milk and honey, and they saw that the people were kind of tall. So once they spoke what they had to say, and Caleb actually comes back and silenced them and says, let us go up once and possess it for we're able to overcome it. They came back with embellishing, you know, oh, but they were actually giants. I said they were tall, but they were actually giants and we should not go there. We are like grasshoppers to them and they're going to crush us. We can't do it. I'm just saying if y'all, I mean, y'all on your own because we going to die. It's not good. And then the children of Israel, much like us today, they immediately took the word of man, not focused on where, what was moving them. Where was this coming from? They immediately started talking about why can't we go back to Egypt? Why can't we go back to Egypt again? I said, after the third time of reading, and then they even said, we're going to vote to have somebody take us back to Egypt. I said, Moses is so good because he goes to, he goes in with the Lord and is like, he actually tells God to chill. <laughs> but I would have been like, bye. After so many times of them being like, we want to go back to slavery. I would have been like, why are you still talking about it? Be about it. Bye. But, <laughs> you know, like, I'm tired of hearing y'all talk about Egypt. It was terrible. You were slaves. But what God says after Moses comes back, because God was about to go off. He literally was like, about to? I can I can release pestilence on them. About I'm going to disinherit to? them. Like, he was just, I, I saw him clapping in my head. Like, I'm a, I'm a. Like, I saw him going, I saw the hand, <laughs> and all of that. And Moses goes in and is like, yo, God, chill. I know Jesus and the Holy Spirit are on the side, like, yo, God going in. <laughs> but in the end, after Moses, like, comes to him and pleads on behalf of the people, like, please, Lord, you know, like, let your glory, just let, as long as you get glory in all this, you come on, God, you know. And God is like, yeah. But my servant, Caleb, because he had a different spirit with him and followed me fully, he had a different spirit with him and followed me fully. So it wasn't what Caleb himself did, but it was the spirit that Caleb had with him. And that goes into what are you filling your vessel with? What are you filling your vessel with? How do you spend your time? Are you, you know... What are you watching? What are you listening to? It's just stuff for you to be like, to put yourself in check. And I know, I, again, I always say I speak for me personally. I know those moments and those days when if I'm like, oh, well, well, this movie isn't that bad or, oh, I'll just watch this or whatever, and that <laughs> your thoughts and let somebody say something wrong to me that day and I'm popping, I'm popping off and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, Lord, I shouldn't have done that or whatever, but on the days when I really, really am like, ooh, okay, worshiping, reading in it, ooh, let's watch this, this is really good, and I'm filling my vessel with the spirit, yeah. those days when I get tried, I'm not going to say I don't get agitated, but I'm not cussing everybody out and, you know, popping off and like, who won it? Who's next? Like, it's a difference because of the spirit that's with me. Okay. It's not me. So, and I, I mean, you guys know how I feel like with Joshua and them going and saying, let's get it mm -hmm. when they go back in, but it is just really, and also when Joshua and them go back, when their spies come back, their spies actually go through stuff and end up having to lay down on the top of a prostitute's house and have to get up out of there. And there's people, they actually went through stuff and came back. But their first words out of their mouth were that the Lord has promised us this land. Let's go get it. They acknowledged God. Mm -hmm. So they knew the spirit that was with them. That made all the difference. God makes all the difference. And so that's, yeah. 
that's all. I know I, I just went all I was all over from Genesis. If y'all didn't if y'all didn't catch all the verses, it was Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, num I'm joking. But it was a lot. <laughs> Joshua, Joshua and Judges. Sorry, took yeah. me back. <laughs> yes, <and prayer. laughs> we made up a song to memorize the old testament because my mom <laughs> my mom made us. But he's the same. He's the same. He is the same. Yes. <laughs> So, all right. You guys ready to get into songs? Well, yeah. I, don't, I don't have any songs this week. Okay. Oh, what? what? I don't have any songs this week. And that's fine. I don't. We did a lot of talking. It's okay. I mean, I did yeah. a lot. Of yeah. Yeah. I mean, I heard songs, but nothing, nothing struck hit. me for me to say I do have a song. So, yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. amen. 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 Thank you for not bringing, like, being like, my song this week is somebody prayed for me. <laughs> You're like, what? Who sings that? I don't know. Oh, um, <laughs> that's embarrassing. <laughs> that was going to be my song. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, Y'all don't have no song. No. But it really, I mean, that part, we try to be earnest. If, if you don't have a song, that's perfectly fine. I, I I do have a song this week, but it is one that we might have played before, but it's one that spoke to me this week, um, mm -hmm. and it's Take Me Back by Maverick City Music. Aww. So in the morning, yeah, so in the morning when I, I have gotten up this week, every day this week, I have um, started off with that song, and it just, it, it, I don't know, I love the way that it's written because it is so nostalgic and how it starts off is talking about remembering when you were young and how your relationship was like with God then and as I think back over like the things that I've gone through in my life and how God has shown up to really hold me and provide me with joy in the place of pain so many times. Mm. Um, this song just helps to take me into that space of... Um, just thankfulness mm. and peace and mm. joy. Um, so that's why that's that's my song this week. Okay. All righty, all righty. And what I'm gonna—I know we actually, you guys, we said we were gonna start our new format this week, and we did not. But yeah. it's okay. Nope. We'll do it next week. Say I, do forgot. We want. I forgot all about it. I do. So what I will do is I will throw out there the song that I have this week. Is I had two. One is "Let Me Know" by Andy Mineo featuring some other dude. I'll let you know who it is. And then there's another song. Reach Records just dropped their, I don't know if it's an LP or what, but it's a, a collection of songs called Summer. Hmm. And they every night at midnight, they've been dropping a song. If you guys don't know, on YouTube, if you check out YouTube, you'll be able to see all of these really cool, dope songs they what have does dropped. What does it come up on, on YouTube? What is Summer. It? It's called Summer? Reach Records, okay. Summer. Reach and Records, so, okay. um, the Andy Mineo song was the one that stood out to me, and then Lecrae, Andy Mineo, and I think his name is Holvey, 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 Huey, Huey, I don't know, but it's a song called Celebrate More. Hmm. So, those, we're going to listen to those three songs, Take Me Back, love that song, Let Me Know, and Summer, I'm sorry, not Summer, but uh, Celebrate More, and we will be right back. All right, so we watched all of our songs. Yay. Take Me Back by Maverick City Music. Awesome. Let Me Know by... Oh, I still didn't catch the guy's name. It's by Andy and one other gentleman, but I'll have all the names and everything in the description below. And then Celebrate More 116, which is featuring Lecrae, Andy Mineo, and Halvey. The video is hilarious. Yes. Hilarious, and it really speaks to how I think we're all feeling like if somebody says, hey, I'm having a birthday party or something, you're like, party? Party? <laughs> but really good. And Take Me Back, a great praise yes. and worship song. It really, really just like takes you straight into the spirit and you're yeah. ready to, I mean, it just opens you up. Yes. You know, and it takes your mind to different places and has you thinking about, you know, just your journey with God. And Let Me Know is um, one that Andy, I love how he speaks on his songs about his relationship with his wife. Mm 
Mm. And he is very, it isn't all like, oh, you're perfect, you're perfect. Like at one point in the song, he's like, how's it all in 8 a.m. and you're big mad? You know, like he talks about the ups and downs and he also bigs her up and he talks about how he loves how she can shift the mood of a room and, you know, how he wished he went, met her sooner and everything. It's really, really dope and really cool to, and I, I pray for more and more of that for our young men and our young women, um, just healthy examples of relationships and how to actually speak to and about young ladies and about your relationship. And there's a way to speak to and about them. And it doesn't have to be like, yes, because in the book of, of the song of Solomon, this is, it doesn't always have to be like that, but to earnestly come from where you're coming from and still stay within, you know, what God says about relationships, healthy relationships. Anyway, we are about to get out of here. Yeah. Can you believe it? Yeah. Hey, let me know. <laughs> let me know. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes, but ch- definitely check out that summer project because it sounds like the most bomb cookout music ever. Like you could just throw it on and like cook out and have, and people, if they don't listen to the lyrics, then I think you're just like, just bumping like whoever. And then you're like, when you listen to it, you're like, oh, they're talking about as one of this this song I was listening to the other day, this is Jesus music. <laughs> um, so pretty cool. Check that out. And did you guys have any closing thoughts or anything before we nothing? Uh, just um, yeah, you know, all you parents out there who are gonna be homeschooling for the first time, mm. you know, we were meant for a time like this. <laughs> Yes. She's yes. over here raising the roof. Yes, and remember your building stones because the building stones that you're built upon can be trusted and just, you know, let God lead you through your homeschooling days. Um, don't find yourselves, you know, going into a format that that is someone else's. Trust in what God has given you. Um and he'll lead you in a peaceable way Mm. and i pray that for all of you as you go into your homeschool days as others prayed over me Mm. i was one of those beginners um started homeschooling about 30 years ago and i pray this in earnest for you all today as you start planning in a way that you've never planned before and you know be it you have a lot or a little what you have is what you need to train up your children in the ways that they should go and um just believe and trust in god amen amen Amen. yeah i do think i was like it was interesting how there's been a debate for a while about how God has been removed from schools and God was like, oh, you want to remove me from the school? Shut them down. Shut them I down. removed the schools. I removed, I removed the schools. You don't have Moses around to tell me to chill. Moses up there like, God, chill. He's like, no, Jesus is like, God is going off. <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to pray and we're going to get out of here. We thank you guys so much for tuning in. And also, we, we're we going to get into our Bible study. We are in our, we've just got finished with our first week of the Job study with Lisa Harper. You guys check that out. To me, the study is like pretty bomb and worth it. And Lisa Harper is super dope. So um, I will link the uh, information for that in the where you can get her bible study but does anybody feel led to pray to close this out here today i can pray and close this out awesome let's go all right god thank you for our time together today i really appreciate being able to come together and to be able to talk about our crazy beautiful weeks but thank you for continuing to have your hand on us and our listeners and to um be there as we walk through these upcoming weeks we definitely you know pray and thank you for what you're doing for the parents who are going to be 
homeschooling their children. Um, we thank you for the parents who decided to not homeschool their kids and ask that you protect their children and they send them back out into the world. And we just thank you for um, sound mind because uh, we know that there are difficult decisions that are being made by everyone right now, but that you are with us as we're making those decisions. So we're thankful that you did not um, leave us with fear or worry, but you left us with peace and joy and a strong mind and just thank you for being with us as we lean into that uh the up in this upcoming week and the upcoming weeks um and just prepare for what's next yes. in jesus name i pray amen, amen. amen. all right we're gonna get out of here thank you guys you guys have another crazy beautiful week and next week will be week 20 hopefully we have something really crazy lined up there i don't know we'll see what god does but we love you guys and keep walking in love and peace and joy let's infect the world with that let's go viral yeah yeah let's go viral (laughs) thank you all for stopping by (laughs) that's her new hashtag bye